Living off grid and on the move in a tiny mobile home is fun, but also challenging. We know firsthand because we've been doing it for years in all climates, in all weathers, and at all times of the year. So with our ambitious plan to drive around the world, we know that we need to take care of ourselves to make van life sustainable and what happens when we don't. So in this episode, join us on the north coast of Spain where we're sharing what it takes to make this lifestyle sustainable. This morning, we woke up in the most magical place. To be honest with you, I was like a bit skeptical when Leah said it's a cliff top parking. I was like, oh, can we not go to the beach? But actually being elevated above this, like and being able to see right down the coastline is actually quite special. I think this is the last time on a trip that I'll be able to see in a de direct line across the ocean back to Jersey. Bye mom, bye dad, <laughs> see you in a few years. Alaska decided to follow me up the hill today, so I guess she's coming with me to do some meditation. <laughs> the one thing that I really wanted to start and take seriously on this expedition was to take care of our health, our physical health and our mental health, because you've seen some of the videos where we've kind of been burnt out and not very happy. Um, finding things quite stressful. So in order for this trip to be successful is really prioritizing our health, especially mental health, especially me with my mental health because um, I've been struggling a lot with depression and, and anxiety and doing things like meditation and taking time out for myself is so important to keep uh, my mind healthy and strong. So um, the one thing that the Basque country has taught us so far is just to really appreciate, like slow down a bit, appreciate things a little bit more, like the food and stuff, like don't just shove food down your mouth really quickly just because you're hungry, like sit, enjoy your food, eat smaller portions, eat great good food, um, good produce and Take time to like enjoy the beauty around you. Do exercise, go surfing, enjoy the ocean. Um, this spot here is perfect for uh, some reflection. It's really quiet, there's no one around. I'm gonna enjoy this meditation, I think. I really need it right now. I usually put my timer on for 20 minutes. I definitely did not do meditation for the whole of the 20 minutes, but I put it on 20 minutes because I know that I will get maybe at my at best 10 good minutes of proper meditation. The rest of the time I'm just overthinking, thinking about what I have to do, thinking about the future, thinking about the past. So it's really hard to um, to get proper you know, good meditation in. Living in a tiny space with a partner means you are together for almost 24 hours a day. Seeking solitude is key to ensuring that it's possible to cohabit in a tiny home. How do we meditation with a dog? Me too. I think throughout this journey, we're gonna be talking a lot about 
how we're developing routines, I guess, on the road and how we're dealing with things like mental health and physical health because they are the most challenging things to go through when you're on the road and living this lifestyle. But we are learning and we're going to be learning a lot throughout this journey. We are going to be making mistakes on this journey and we will try to be our best and become our best person. Hopefully at the end of this expedition, we will um, become stronger, better, wiser people. So we'll see, it'll be interesting to see how we go. Looking forward to um, burning off some of the pinchos I've been eating. Uh, one of the things I'm really enjoying on the coast, not just the great food that's going into my body, but the great opportunity to burn off those calories as well. Um, just being able to be out in the water is kind of like restoration for my mind, body and soul. Um, it's like my form of meditation and it won't be available on the entire trip all the way to Australia, but here in the Basque Country, it is available and it's plentiful and I am going to take advantage of it. Perfect way. Oh, barrels. How do you get down there? Unfortunately, on the route to drive around the world, there aren't waves in all that many places. Here on the north coast of Spain, however, there is plenty of swell and lots of opportunity to do my favorite pastime, scouring the coast and hunting for empty waves. closer to the beach than this could you literally wheels on the sand and nobody here can't believe a slice of paradise like this doesn't have a hundred people on it and the only reason that is is because you go two kilometers that way or two kilometers that way and there'll be another one but the wave's not very good so I'm out of here next We are on our way out of Spain now uh, to go into Portugal because we've only got a couple more weeks left until we have to leave the EU. So unfortunately we're Already? leaving Spain. I know we haven't felt like we haven't been here that long and there's so much to see. So The good news is we get to come back on the way back into Europe hopefully. Yeah. So. One of the things that we wanted to do before we left Spain was to get Alaska sorted for her to enter into uh, Morocco because it is quite complicated. More importantly though, coming back from Morocco yes. into the EU. Yeah, so she needed some things done before she got into Morocco to head back into the EU. Because Morocco is a high rabies country. Yeah, it is high risk, and like there's been a lot of cases of rabies, so yeah. like we had to be, um, we had to get our paperwork in order for her to be able to come back, and yes. that had to happen strangely now yes. before we get to the rabies country. Yes, and as usual, it's very complicated, and nobody really knows what to do, and everyone had a different answer to what to do. So luckily. My multilingual, very clever fiance here, who can speak Spanish, That's me. Um, was able to speak to a vet here in Spain, and we went to do that because obviously he could speak the language and could try to work out what to do. She's lagging behind because basically she knows we're off to the vet. Come on, Tika. Time to get Alaska's blood test done so that we can basically get back into Europe after we leave for Africa. Um, 
very complicated. It's just, the vet doesn't exactly know what to do or what's going on, but hopefully this works out. So basically, Alaska had to have a blood test to make sure that she's resistant to the rabies virus, that her um, vaccine is still present in her bloodstream. So having a um, clear documentation of how many rabies vaccines she's had in her life is not enough. She has to be tested. And unfortunately, the poor little soldier had to have quite a lot of blood taken. It made me feel quite gross. Even thinking about it now, it's freaking me out. They took so much out of one leg that they had to stop and then I can't talk about it anymore. Poor little thing. So that's all done now. It is complicated traveling with a dog. Um, even the vets don't really know what's going on. And every single time we've ever spoken to a vet about traveling to the next country, they've always had to consult like various government com departments for us. So yes. it's not something you can just wing because if we got, if we were in Morocco and tried to get back into Spain without the proper documentation and it being done properly, she would have either been um, quarantined or like left. best case scenario best case scenario or she would have been put down they would have put her down yeah it's not uncommon for that to happen they'll just say sorry she can't come in um and we're gonna destroy your animal so that would have obviously been a disaster yes so hopefully fingers crossed we can go to africa and hopefully fingers crossed we can come back from africa otherwise it's going to be afra Asta africa She had a treat. I got her some steak. Oh, good girl. Look that at her, look at her. She's got both arms what done. What happened? Why did it drop twice? They took so much blood out of one arm that they had to take it out of the other arm as well. Oh, was she okay? No, I wasn't okay. She was all right. Oh. She was, she was freaking out a bit, but. Oh, I don't like blood. blood. How did you survive? Honestly, I didn't. She was more worried about me than she was about the dog. <laughs> it's a little embarrassing. <laughs> it's for you. Come on, she won't eat it. She's like, oh, that's not for me. That's, that's not dog food. Come on. Muy bien. Muy bien, chica. Muy bien. How quick are you eating it? So cow. glad we stopped that was insane that was actually the scariest uh, drive I've, we've had in this combi it's just that was way too windy I was looking up the wind speed it says here it's 29 kilometers an hour so that's a good kind of reference to know that if there's anything over that then we really shouldn't be driving because that was quite dangerous <laughs> so uh, I think it's we were going to do that anyways because we knew that this vehicle was a bit um, you know, hard to drive in the wind um, and it wasn't the safest and we always promised ourselves that if it was going to be windy, um, like very, very windy and affecting our drive, then we will just stop and um, wait until the next day or until it dies down. So um, I'm glad we made that rule for ourselves because it's not very nice driving like that. It's really uncomfortable. Yeah, so I think Ben's going to go surfing now.
I'm glad we stopped. Holy moly, it's amazing. No one out there either. Wind's blowing in just the right direction. Good choice, babes. <laughs> I'm gonna go and play, I think. Crazy, man. Is that fun? Yeah! <laughs> cold! <laughs> Getting colder! Poor Alaska woke up with diarrhea last night morning she's a bit ill maybe from the all the injections that she's had to have poor thing she's had so many rabies injections in her like the past five years are you hungry Alaska you trying to tell us something Chica hey, it's your breakfast time <laughs> neither Leah nor I have a watch but we don't need one because Alaska tells us what time it is but it's uh, 9 o'clock in the morning and 6 p.m. in the evening. It's her dinner time. <laughs> Isn't it, Chica? Uh, hey! Oh, where are you going? <laughs> Boy, be <yeah>. yeah. <laughs> Oh, you're so funny. Boy, be yeah, that guy. We try to look after ourselves sometimes. Oh, oh. Alaska, what's wrong? What do you want? Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. She's obviously not that oh. sick, uh, even though she got up three times in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom because oh, oh. she had diarrhea, but she looks fine this morning. We lied when we said we were going to leave Spain and go to Portugal. Um, we're still going to stay here for a little bit longer because there are some lovely beaches on the coast that we still want to see. So we're going to take the coastal road up and come down to Portugal instead of going straight to Portugal. Um, yeah, I'm just checking out the Combi Crew map. Have you seen how many like recommended spots there are on here, Leo? For like, Spain or Portugal? Europe. Look at that. You can barely see the map. There's a couple of spots been recommended by the Combi Crew, so I might go check that one out. There's surf. Need another reason? <laughs> yeah, no, that will do. So, what do you think of this camp spot? Great camp spot. Yeah. Sometimes it can be hard to sleep when you're in a vehicle and there's other vehicles around you coming and going, or you're near a street, or there's just people outside, and you're always just a little bit on edge, and sometimes it's difficult. But when you're parked on your own on a cliff top, this close to the surf, and all you can hear is the white noise of the ocean. Honestly, it's just the best sleep. Apart from Valia, who thinks about editing all night. Ben made a really good point before about uh, sleep. And because this whole Spanish trip has been, we've been really focusing on being healthier with our mind and our body. Sleep obviously is a really important thing to start off the day well, so it really dictates whether we're going to have a bad day or a good day. And last night, even though we were in the perfect location to have a good sleep, I still was quite, I was woke up in the middle of the night just overthinking things, usually about work and stuff. So um, I woke up this morning and I did some meditation. It was raining this morning, so I couldn't go outside and have that space, so I did it inside in the combi with Ben next to me like doing his thing and it was a lot harder to do it with somebody so close in your space and just not being able to really get into the zone of meditation and with time it will get easier but at the moment it, it is quite difficult but I did it anyways I did 10 minutes of it um, and it did help 
and I just need to get over the fact that sometimes I'm just going to have to do it with Ben sitting right next to me. You can't let that stop me. to help me with my hair when I don't want to get my whole body wet so he helps me wash my hair and if anyone's wondering this is all natural um, shampoo from Lush. The record I do actually prefer it when I get to help her wash her body but you don't always get it your way so today it's just hair. Next time though guys when it's body time I'll be sure to bring you with me. I'd be in trouble if I did that. By this point we're approaching the border with Portugal and we've loved our time so far in Spain. We are starting to find our rhythm with van life in Europe and these past weeks have been just what we needed to rejuvenate our mind, body and soul. And just as well, because our routine is about to be interrupted and many problems in Portugal are on the horizon. Now in the Portuguese vets, uh, trying to get a Portuguese passport for Alaska. But that is a story for next time. <laughs>